Moving on to the software side of things, specifically within Logic, there's a ton of different things you can do to get better performance. This is going to be a pretty extensive guide and a long video, so if you've already tried some of the things I'm going to be discussing, I'm going to leave timestamps for all of the different sections and you can just click around to things you may not be familiar with or haven't tried yet to get rid of those system overload issues. Very quickly I want to show you how you can set up your logic project so that you can monitor your CPU and disk resource usage. Up in this top bar you're going to have a little down arrow here. If you click on this and go to custom, you'll have much more information provided here and you'll have a CPU utilization bar as well as a hard drive utilization bar. If you double click on it, it opens up a window that shows you your overall CPU usage per thread, as well as your disk read and write usage. The most obvious thing in terms of getting better performance out of Logic is make sure that all of the other applications on your computer are closed when working in Logic. Even if it's something simple like a web browser, it's using CPU resources that you could be applying to your project to help avoid those overload issues. Every additional program open alongside Logic is going to take away the resources that Logic could be using. By going to Logic Pro X and Preferences, you can access a lot of the different settings that I'm going to discuss. One of the most important things when dealing with system overload issues is your I.O. buffer size. This is basically the amount of time that you're giving your computer to process all of the audio and then feed it back to you through your interface and through your headphones. The more time you're giving your computer to process audio and feed it back to you, the more you're going to be able to get away with using intensive plugins. Unfortunately, when you're recording live instruments, like a MIDI keyboard performance or a guitar plugged in via quarter inch cable into your interface, you're going to require a low I.O. buffer size to avoid excess latency. Latency is the delay between you pressing a key on your keyboard and you hearing that sound back through your headphones, or the time between you plucking a string on your guitar and you hearing that back through your headphones. Using a lower buffer size, which is necessary for recording, is going to require much more CPU utilization from your computer. Raising the I.O. buffer size is going to give your computer more time to process the audio and feed it back through your headphones, which will increase overall latency but require much less CPU utilization. This is super important when using a lot of plugins for mixing a song or mastering a song. Once you've moved past the recording phase and are no longer playing or using any live instruments, you're going to want to bump that I.O. buffer size up for mixing. Mixing is going to require a lot more plugins than recording. If you've already started placing a lot of plugins on your project and began mixing, you do have the option to use something called low latency mode, which is along the top bar here in record and low latency mode, to allow you to record something like a vocal or guitar take with lower latency than what your current I.O. buffer size is set at. This low latency mode is going to deactivate all unnecessary plugins in your session but allow you to keep your I.O. buffer size the same. Once you've finished doing your recording, you can switch low latency mode back off to re-enable the plugins you were using for mixing. Back in Preferences and Audio, you're going to have an option called Processing Threads. Most of the time you can leave this to automatic, especially if you have no other applications open while running Logic. What Processing Threads means is how many cores of your CPU are you allowing Logic to use to process all of your audio. Leaving processing threads set to automatic with no other applications open on your computer is going to allow Logic to utilize as many cores and threads as possible when working on your project. But if you are running other programs at the same time as running Logic, you can manually set how many threads you're going to allow Logic to use. The more threads you dedicate to Logic, the better the performance you're going to get out of the program. But if I were using another program in the background, like Guitar Pro, I could choose to only let Logic utilize 18 cores out of my available 24 cores. Most of the time I'm leaving this set to automatic. Next is process buffer range. I pretty much always leave process buffer range set to large. Keeping process buffer range set to large is going to utilize less CPU resources but slightly increase your overall latency. Still, process buffer range isn't as impactful as IO buffer size in terms of adding noticeable latency to live recordings and playback. Next is multi-threading. For the multi-threading option, choosing playback and live tracks allows your computer to distribute the CPU load to different threads and cores of your CPU, and in turn allow for more live VST instruments and plugins to be played back without overloading the system. If you have a CPU with a high core count, basically anything above 4 cores and 8 threads, keeping this set to playback and live tracks may help evenly distribute the CPU load to all of the cores available. The only situation where you might want to change this to playback tracks is if you don't have any high CPU demand live tracks.
There's a potential that playback tracks alone may place less load on the CPU, so it's worth toggling this back and forth to see if you've any noticeable performance change and less overloads in your session. This is one I don't hear a lot of people talk about, but it could be important in terms of saving CPU resources. And that's summing precision. Moving your summing precision down from 64-bit high precision to 32-bit regular precision may end up saving you some CPU utilization and in turn help avoid sample rate desynchronization and system overload issues. Another way that you can save CPU resources in your session is by using bus routing and bus processing. Just for the example, I have a classic electric piano and an analog bass from Alchemy, and let's say I wanted to put identical processing on both of them. In this case, I'll use a stereo delay. Instead of putting a stereo delay on each individual channel and using two plugins, I can highlight both plugins, go to the mixer, and change the output to a bus. Now I can go to that bus and put the delay on that bus as opposed to on each individual channel. A very practical example of bus processing in the mixing phase would be something like taking two bases and routing them to a bus to do your compression and equalization as opposed to putting the plugins on each channel individually. So what you can do is take your two bases, go into your mixer, and send them to an open bus in your project. Locate that bus, bus 54, and place a compressor on that bus. Now if I solo those two instruments, you can see that I'm processing both of them with one compressor. Obviously that's not going to work for every scenario, and there's going to be plenty of times where you want to have different processing on each instrument, but that is a way that you can avoid using excess plugins. Another thing to pay attention to is how many plugins you have on your project that you're not using. For this project, I inserted a narration vocal channel, audio channel, and Logic automatically created two reverbs for it, bus 2 and bus 3. And for the instrument channels I created, it created two more reverb channels, bus 5 and bus 6. If you're not going to be utilizing any of these reverbs, you can go ahead and remove the individual plugins or delete the channel as a whole. Less unused plugins on your project means overall better performance. Keep in mind though that these channels that Logic is automatically creating aren't going to show up in your arrangement window here, but they will show up in your mixer, so you have to open up your mixer to get rid of them. Turning off or removing unused plugins from your project is also a pretty important way to save valuable CPU resources in situations where you're having overloading. For example, I opened up a drum machine designer kit here, the Atlanta kit, and right out of the box it has all of these different plugins added to it. Even though they're not activated, they still are using some CPU resources. Not much, but you can remove them if you're not using them. One thing to consider is all of the options in your tone drive, compressor, crush, low tone, these are all linked to plugins that you can't immediately see. But if you open up your drum machine designer here and go to each individual kit component, you can see all of the plugins that Logic has automatically created for each instrument making up this kit. Here in the mixer, you can really get an idea of how many plugins that one drum machine designer added to the project. You can go ahead and remove any of these plugins that you don't intend on using, but consider it's going to remove the ability to use some of the knobs in Drum Machine Designer. Still, if you have five instances of Drum Machine Designer in your session, all of those plugins end up adding up and can cause overload issues. Some select synths and other plugins are going to have quality settings. For example, in Logic's built-in Alchemy synth, it has a quality option over here. I currently have it set to great, but if I were experiencing overload issues, I could change it to good or draft until those issues went away. Another VST plugin that has a quality function is Native Instruments Massive. You can see right here it's set to ultra, but if I were having overload issues, I could change it to high or eco to save CPU resources. Another way that you can save CPU resources in your session is by using less processing per each plugin on your individual channels. I put a compressor on this analog happiness channel right here, 
and I'll play it back so you can see what the compressor's doing. I'm only currently doing about three decibels of gain reduction, but if I bring the threshold down and do a lot more compression, it's going to require more CPU utilization out of my computer. The downside to this is, obviously there's instances where you want to do a lot of processing on the channel to get a particular sound, and this can detract from that, but it's something to keep in mind anyways. One of the more common and useful things I hear people talk about when having overload issues is using the freeze function on individual channels. You can access that by right-clicking on your channel, going down to Track Header Components, and enabling Freeze, as well as On-Off, which I'll discuss in a minute. So enable Freeze, back to Track Header Components, and On-Off. To properly utilize freezing, once you've recorded an instrument using a MIDI keyboard or a live audio recording, and have all of the plugins and processing you want applied to that channel, you can use the freeze function to create a temporary audio file with all of the processing that will then allow the computer to disable all of the plugins you're using on that channel. The main limitation here is that it does take some time to freeze your track and create that temporary audio file, as well as the fact that you can't go back in and change any settings on the plugins for that particular channel until you unfreeze it. The main advantage here is that Logic is no longer having to utilize the plugins and processing for that particular channel, and this will free up a good amount of CPU and other computer resources. Now that this base channel is frozen, it's going to sound the same on playback, but I'm unable to go in and alter the Alchemy presets, or Alchemy instrument, or any of the plugins I'm using on the channel. One thing to consider with frozen channels is that now Logic is playing back audio as opposed to live MIDI, so if you have any disk issues, that could be a problem, but it's typically not much of a strain on your disk unless you have a ton of frozen channels. Playing back audio in general is typically easier on the system, at least CPU-wise, than playing back MIDI, but it's more intensive on the hard drive side of things. Another option you can use is the on-off feature that we enabled through track header component. You can simply turn a channel on or off by clicking this button, but this doesn't disable any of the plugins on the channel, so it's not saving as much CPU utilization. Still, this does save CPU utilization on playback because Logic is no longer having to do any processing on that channel. That covers pretty much everything I know in terms of how to deal with system overload issues in Logic. If I missed anything, please leave a comment and I'll make a follow-up video where I go into detail about any other techniques you can use to better utilize CPU resources and avoid issues in Logic. I really appreciate you watching, and if you learned anything from this video or it helped with any of your issues, please leave a like and subscribe.